M0FXB, welcome to my videos learning the Yaesu FTX1 and today we're looking at the first firmware installation. If you go to the yaesu.com site and select the Yaesu FTX1, scroll up and you'll see a section there that's called files. I have got my radio here ready as you can see. Um, so let's scroll up and download the files. So click here where it says files and download the instruction manual and the change log. So you've got it here. You've got firmware update manual. You've got the FT1, FTX1 series firmware update information. And then you've got the FTX1 USA firmware update, the actual files. So when you click the actual files, they'll go to your downloads folder as you just saw up there. And if you have a quick look at the instructions, they're here, they are very detailed, but you need to follow them carefully. One thing we are going to need is to put an SD card into our device. So let's get that one out of the way now. So I would turn off your device and make sure you've got a fully charged battery. If anything, I recommend plugging in the uh, the three point, sorry, the, uh, the DC power lead, which goes in. If we just turn it round, just goes into just here where my finger is, and we'll show you where the the actual, this is quite a, a heavy radio actually. So just behind this flap is the SD card and behind the other flap is where you plug in and connect your Bluetooth module. So you do have to sort of dig in a bit and it's just there and then just clip it. I'm going to take it out. Uh, tweezers will help. So I'm going to put it back in just so you can see it goes this way around and then when you put it in okay I'll pop that in like so i know my hand's in the way but there it is there and you want that clip and if it's face if the gold bit is facing you you're not going to have a problem it will slide in easily if it's backwards it won't so that's in there let's now turn on our radio so you can see that the dc cable's plugged in because you've got a little red light there anyway we're going to turn it on in the normal way and the interesting thing is, when you've got an SD card in, you can actually take a screenshot. Watch this. Oh, it's not going to let me do it now. Ah, oh, it did do it. It did do it. It beeped, but then it did it. <laughs> so now, I definitely, if you, if it's the first time your SD card's gone in, you do have to format it and sort of prepare it. Now, when you put it in, you'll probably get a message saying "set up the the SD card." Mine's been in before, so it's not saying that. So what we're going to do is press. You would just press yes, okay. Um, but what we're going to do now is go to extension settings by holding down the function button. And then you can either turn the function button or you can go forward. Okay, then you've got ex ex extension settings there. It's the next blue one in. So just tap that. Like so. And then go down and you can actually look up your software version by tapping the screen where it says soft version and you can see that i have i actually have got the latest because it came with the with the latest one installed but anyway we're still going to do it so then we'll go down to up one to sd card and i'm just going to go format so it will give you information there's the firmware update we're going to go format click ok now the reason you do that is because it will now put all the files and it will put, you know, it will set up the SD card um, for you ready. But we do, I will save to it once first to be fully set up. So format complete. Let's go back and then we're going to go up. And I'm going to go menu, memory list load, memory. I'm going to save the. I'm going to save everything. So it's got that. And then is it going to let me do it? No, that's, that's a loading. So that's importing. Save. Like that. I'm going to go enter. And of course, if you don't want to lose your memories that you put in, more reason to save. So we're just going to save so that all the files are on there. Then we're going to grab our adapter and plug it into our PC. There's my little adapter there, USB. And uh, yeah, that worked. So we go back. Right, so hitting the function button and the memory save menu. Oh, I'm going to go menu save as well. Right, just save everything. 
So that's it. So we're back out. Everything's there. Back, back. And we're gonna now going to remove the SD card. I'm not going to show you that again because you've already seen that already. Let's just pop that out and get it into my adapter. Okay, there you go. SD card's in there. And that's going straight into my PC. I always recommend you use the blue one. Um, but anyway, that's in my PC. Let's see what shows up. So to find it, go to your little yellow folder at the bottom, right click and click File Explorer. Then here, go to PC. And it's going to show everything that's plugged into your PC. You'll see it on the right here as well. So now click, look, USB drive, click. And straight away, let's move me out of the way a bit. You see FTX1, double click. Now the files that we're going to add, if we're going to show you the instruction manual, are going to be put here. You'll see that in the instructions, it shows all the yellow files. And just underneath the yellow files, it's got up a bit, it tells you to put the main and the display files here, look, okay? Underneath, I believe with the first firmware, there's actually an extra file. Uh, is it the bootloader? But anyway, we're gonna pop, drag them underneath here. So keep this window open, go to your downloads, double click the folder they've given you. Oh, it's saying it's already there. And I would extract it somewhere you can find it. So see, I've created a file here called FX. Just right click and select new folder. And we're just going to click extract to, and we're going to choose it. It's there on our desktop. And we're going to go looking for FX. There it is there. Click OK. So everything's in that folder that we need. So now I'm just going to drag those folders where I want them. So if you double click, and you can see there's three lots there, three lots. I'm going to drag all three, put them underneath, just like it says. One, two, and then three. Of course, the instructions are there. We've got them there. I'm going to pop them back into the FTX. So back at the radio. Uh, now, in if you look at the manual, it does say you need to load the bootloader. Uh, now, mine, my firmware's already been done, so it may not need the bootloader. But to get to the bootloader screen, you have to turn the knob five times clockwise, five clicks. So let's just do it anyway. And to get it into firmware mode, and this is quite fiddly, you have to turn it off. Okay. And uh, hold down the quick MB and the VM and the M button. Uh, but they are quite big buttons, but it's it's definitely fiddly to do on camera. I'll try, but if I can't, I'll just do it off camera. So one, two, three, turn on. And we're in this version here. Uh, insert latest version firmware, so I've got to touch the screen to continue, but we're going to go one, two, three, four, five. Okay. So it's checking. It does say do it to do it. So that is what the instructions say. And it's very specific that you do not touch the screen the first time. I think with future updates, you would just touch the screen and go to the next step. But because we're doing the bootloader, you don't. So the manual says we can now hit the update button. Remember, after all of this, we have to factory reset the radio. Just remember that. So let's do that. So we're just going to tip tap update and it just it's just highlighting the top one. Do not turn off the power. And um, we have been good people and followed instructions. So effectively, Yesu bootloader is being loaded, but it was already on there already. But anyway, we've done it. Fast forward if it gets boring. Done. And it's rebooted. Ta da! like so. So following the instructions, we'll uh, go back to the radio, hold down the function, extension settings, down to SD card. Now we're going to go firmware update. So done, and it will find the files that we've got. Now, according to the instructions, we should tick both and then go update. Click OK. And it's going to queue them up and do them one at a time. 
And like I said, I've already got mine. Now, I, it's obvious there's going to be some, some major updates coming on this. I've seen the bugs. I've gone through the bugs. And there, you know, there are some bugs. Generally, you, you don't overall, you don't really notice it that much. But you do notice it. And so for, they will be going crazy to fix those bugs. Also, we want to be able to push the X button. We can use fusion at the moment, but we can't actually push the X button. Although group mode works. APRS is like 97% working. HF works. VHF, UHF, airband. It's, that's all working. All the menus are in the right places. The filtering, the Bluetooth, the GPS works. So don't uh, let people don't be thinking that all oh, the radio is not ready but yes it just came out and they they did get out as quick as they could for the usa customers and that's not a bad thing that i think that was a good thing that you know we customers have been asking for this set um for ages so they got it out quick but yeah then they went okay there's going to be a few bugs but let's just get it out there because they want the feedback from the users they want users to go this ain't quite right, that ain't quite right. So they can help, you know, building the firmware for a radio, and please fast forward if I'm boring, but building the firmware for a radio that is advanced as this radio, yeah? It's massive, massive work. Imagine what it, what it does and it's all compact. And then they had to build the hardware to get it all into this case. And then eventually they came up with the idea of, oh, we can now have 100 watts. And they went with the SPA1. Um, and so, you know, come on, really, they've done a great job on this. Um, I can't think of anything really on the market that is as sophisticated as this, as this radio. I can't think of anything. The 705 is very good. And when it came out in its day, that was super, super sophisticated and still is, I think. Um, a shame they didn't manage to chuck the Wi-Fi in, but, but really, do you know what? Do, do we actually use the Wi-Fi for much on the 705? If terminal mode was working, um, you know, I'm not even going to say the word, then maybe, but generally we use Bluetooth, we use GPS, uh, 705 has DPRS, we use APRS. Uh, we like the four inch touch screen, the interface of icon, we like all that, the waterfall. GPS works really well, yeah? So generally the 705 works. The big, big, big thing that's different is the, on this one is the dual receive. You're talking dual receive, C4FM, HF, VHF, UHF, six meters. And over here, even though you can actually select it on this radio, it's got four meters, 70 megahertz. Uh, I don't know why they haven't added 220. I just don't understand why they haven't done that for the USA customers, unless they have. If they have, tell me. If they're gonna, tell me, because I think that'll make a massive, you know. It's not that it's massively used, but people, the, the USA customers want a tri-band. They want a tri-band. Um, and then things like crossbar and repeat and all that. I, I don't know. I have to just test that. It's just something I've never actually used. So you can see there that's gone in now. It will reboot on its own. Um, da, da, da. And then we'll do the whole factory reset and it, sh it shows on the instructions. So that's a full firmware install. It will be easier on the next one, I feel, because you won't need to do the bootloader. But to be honest with you, the bootloader just meant turn the knob five times that's all it actually meant and and you, there's you know you and then you load one extra thing that's 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 the only difference i could see with the bootloader because i had people message me going oh no you've got to load the bootloader and i'm like the word bootloader is a scary word yeah but i'm just trying to prop it up so it's not so glary right it's all back on looking great let's go on to the factory reset um and then we'll look at the firmware version that's on the set Factory resets nice and easy. The bottom two buttons underneath the VFO, the fine and the back, and turn on. So let's do it. Right, is it? So turn it off, like so. And then we're going to hold. Oh, this is fiddlier than I thought. Um, let me. Go. <laughs> I'm going to have to go like this. Try and get my fingers in. Keeping them pressed. Yes, that looks factory reset to me. Let's get an antenna on there. So, okay. I mean, it is a bit nervy, isn't it? So, A and B, it's on the B. Let's just cycle through. So, we can independent volume controls. If 
RF gain as well. It's gone straight into 3DS. If you tap the middle, it should go faster. Doesn't look too busy. Ah, someone there. We have a station. And on the A band, we can tap this and we can actually... No, wrong one. Tap the zeros and we can go... Sorry, my hand was in the way there. So you've got sub and main scope, you know. Hit the 3DS, then you get the icon type. Press and hold the menu. Should we have a look at the firmware version? Hit D, back out. You get that scope to come back up a bit. But it's all gone well, very pleased with that. And then we're going to go press and hold the F. Forward, forward, extended, software, and there we are. 1.02 display, 1.04 main, DSP 1.01, .01, SDR 1.03, and of course, you know, it's only available in the USA at the moment. We've got this model here for testing. And I got this for my all my USA viewers because I have, you know, hundreds of thousands of views from the USA. Of course, I appreciate all the views that I get anywhere in the world. Um, but I thought I'd, I need to provide some, you know, helpful videos for my friends in the USA. And here it is, and I'm loving every minute of it. And I think it's fantastic. I know a lot of people, a lot of people are saying about the price, but you've got to remember that this radio is two radios in one. If you've got the 705, you can only single receive. And that is so crucial. And the fact that you can dual receive at the same time, you can do C4FM, HF, C4FM, Airband, and Airband works works great on this as well. Airband. Bye for now. Remember to subscribe, 73.